All right, folks, so AI is here to stay. It is going at full speed into every aspect of our lives. But there's one industry that I actually think AI has the potential to completely destroy. And so that's what this episode is going to be uh, focused on primarily. But welcome to the Granite Geek Show, guys, a video podcast where we talk about tech and global news because nowadays tech really is global news. Uh, We're also going to wrap up the year in Apple and talk about my favorite Apple products. So you guys can start commenting now what your favorite Apple products of the year uh, were. And uh, so hit the subscribe button, click the bell. It's YouTube. You know what to do. If you're at work with your headphones in, or if you're on your commute, welcome to the show. Sit back and relax. Well, if you're driving, don't, don't, you know, stay focused, stay alert. Uh, And let's get right into it. So let's talk about Apple. They are a very TikTok company, right? TikTok, TikTok. And uh, I think, obviously, this year was a talk year. I think it was a very weak talk year. Or can I really say that? I think that it wasn't strong in the ways I expected it to be strong. But I can't really say that it was a weak year when we look at some of their other releases. So I've got a list here of everything Apple released, and I'm going to uh, talk about each one and talk about uh, what my favorite ended up being. So first of all, you got new iPads. the 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro, because this was the year of M2. Um, And you also got an 11 inch uh, M2 iPad Pro, all those, you know, those models there. And we just got those new colorful iPads as well. Uh, The 10th gen. And we had the iPhone 14, obviously, you're always going to get iPhones. Um, I think the thing that was disappointing, we'll start with the iPad. I think the thing that was disappointing about that is that it brought no new hardware features. M2, It was already a disappointment since we saw it in the M2 MacBook Air, which we'll get to a little bit later. And so it wasn't like we were expecting much of it in the iPad, right? Uh, Because of the chassis, it's not really going to get better performance than we saw in the MacBook Air M2. So the only other thing that we could have wanted was additional hardware. Not necessarily additional hardware, but new features. Like, for instance, uh, just moving the camera to the horizontal layout. Maybe that 14-inch that was rumored for a long time. Maybe we'll get it in the spring, but we didn't get it this year, and I don't think uh, even in these last couple weeks of December that we'll get it at all. Um, There's a couple of different things they could have done with the iPad that they just decided not to do. Now, from the iPad, obviously, we have the iPhone 14, which I have right here, the 14 Pro Max. I did my full review on that. Uh, I set out to make the best iPhone review on the internet. I think I got really close. I think I achieved that goal, honestly, but I don't want to toot my own horn. But the link to that will be down in the description below. The thing I didn't like about the iPhone 14 uh, was everything except the camera. The camera is genuinely uh, not hyped enough. And Apple, it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf. Apple's been hyping their cameras so much, touting cinematic quality for so long um, that nobody really believes them when they say, no, for real, this thing is ridiculous. And I'm not talking about like action mode where it's like a stabilized thing. I'm talking about pure quality. When you're shooting in ProRes with that primary camera, it's off the chain. When you're shooting in cinematic mode, uh, it's really, really good. I did some videos uh, using cinematic mode on the iPhone 14 Pro Max, I'll link those down to this in the description as well, but you guys are free to check those out. So a big one that we got was the Apple Watch Ultra, along with the Series 8 of the Apple Watch. Series 8 was not that impressive, to be honest. The Ultra um, definitely stole the show, but it kind of has fizzled out as well. It was the wow factor because it's literally the best watch that Apple can make, and they're trying to see if there's a market for that. I think that I'm rocking the Series 7 right now. I think it's more of a status symbol. And a lot of the things Apple does sometimes are just status symbols. But this one really doesn't have a lot of functionality for anyone other than the super elite athletes. And don't get me wrong, Apple didn't promote it or tout it as the Apple Watch for everybody. They said this is for people who don't use Apple Watch because they're in two extreme conditions uh, for the Apple Watch to even be able to survive. So we had that, and that's definitely, I would say, my top two Apple devices that were released in 2022, but we're not at number one yet. So also, we got um, the AirPods Pro second generation. We got the studio display. I mentioned the M2 MacBook Air. I think on aesthetics alone, the MacBook Air M2 won 
Um, it's probably the most beautiful laptop of any company to come out in 2022 and probably the most beautiful device to come out in 2022, period. I think so. Uh, when you think about how thin it was, when you think about that, even even the color, which, you know, everybody loved at first, but then when the fingerprints started happening, you kind of like, Egh. but it still looks just so good. What hurt it was the performance and the lackluster performance of M2. But other than that, it was a fantastic looking device. So on looks, definitely the M2 MacBook Air. Now, that kind of leaves one device left that I haven't talked about. Um, oh, sorry. There was the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro, which nobody knows why they really released. MKBHD did a video on that, just like, why, why does this even exist? Like, who would actually get the M2 13-inch MacBook Pro over the M2 Air? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In fact, it would almost be better to get uh, the M2 anything than the M2 MacBook Pro because that fan doesn't push the M2 that much where you're going to notice that much of a performance difference because the M2 as a whole doesn't give that much of a noticeable performance difference over M1. So as an iPad guy, you're probably like, well, why wasn't it, it the iPad, right? Well, I actually think DaVinci Resolve stole the show as a whole in the whole iPad world. Uh, finally releasing professional video editing software for the iPad. Not that we didn't have LumaFusion, but DaVinci is a big player. It's one of the top three. And so for them to join in on this, I think it's a big deal. And no, I unfortunately, if you guys saw last week's episode, I still do not have my beta to test out and try out. But as soon as I do, we'll make a video on that. It's going to be a lot of fun. No, I'm gonna not going to keep you waiting anymore. My favorite device, I think you may have already guessed it if you know everything that was released this year, was the Mac Studio desktop computer from Apple. I think that thing is just the bee's knees. It's my favorite Apple device probably in the last five years, to be honest. Uh, I'm trying to think if that's accurate. Yeah. Since the 2018 iPad Pro, yeah, so and that was 2018, so the last four years, I would say that it, it's the best, my favorite Apple device. Why, you ask? Well, because it is just ridiculously powerful. You can't really make it sweat unless you're doing a Hollywood movie. And some people are like, well, I want to make quality like a Hollywood movie. No, like legitimately with this device, unless you are doing the real deal Hollywood movie and you really need a server farm, you're not going to make this thing sweat at all. And I had one and I didn't want to let it go, but I was doing a whole bunch of projects that took me out of my home studio. So I couldn't have the studio. So uh, that's why I have the MacBook Pro here, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And it's great. It's it's fun. It does it doesn't slow down. Like it's a great performer. But I don't feel like there's as much headroom with the MacBook Pro as there is with the Mac Studio, right? That thing was just bah! and I intend to get one again. Not really soon, but soon. <laughs> uh it was just great. And just being able to plug it into your already existing setup. You know, your speakers, your monitor, whatever you had, I think that was really great. But in terms of Apple, that's kind of what was released. I think it was the two standout devices, obviously the Mac Studio, like I said, and the Apple Watch uh, Titanium, the Apple Watch, uh, what's it called? Why am I drawing a blank on that? The Apple Watch Ultra, that's what it is. I should know because the Studio has the, the M series chip Ultra, right? So those were the top two devices, I think, in my opinion. But of course, let me know. And from there, guys, let's go to the conversation of AI, a.k.a. artificial intelligence. I'm sure you've seen everywhere uh, the explosion of AI-generated art in people's profile pictures and in their content. Maybe you've been on YouTube and you've seen videos that have AI where they'll say, this, here are the lyrics to this song, or I'll play this song, but all the images generated for it were made by an AI, right? So it's just taking over. Particularly with profile pictures and artwork and things like that, I think art is going the way of the dodo. I think art is going to die in terms of it being created by human beings. I think it is the first 
of many uh, industries that will fall to the computers. And this is not a discussion on the singularity, although I may have, there may be some undertones of that. Uh, but guys, it's kind of like the writing's on the wall with that. You know, we have self-driving cars. I think this is the most significant development in technology since the electric vehicle, right? So we have the iPhone, and not to say, not the very first electric vehicle. I'm talking about Tesla, right? That really made it mainstream, that really made every single car company from Ford to Chevy to Mercedes uh, wake up and start to move their entire product line over. I think, in fact, uh, I believe it's Audi or Infiniti, one of those two, that said they will be going all electric. Their entire line of vehicles will be electric. Um, so since then, there has been nothing that is that close to changing the way we live and everything that we kind of thought about the world and industries and things like AI generated art. And this is why. Why would you ever buy art again? And I'm not saying that these AI generated pieces of art are perfect, right? They still have flaws. I even, I, I may show you guys some photos right now here in the video of art that I generated. And I know I haven't made it my profile picture. I'm not, a, I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon there. And it's not just for the sake of jumping on the bandwagon. Like the artwork is great and cool and, you know, but I, I haven't felt the need to really do it yet. I like my profile images, but this artwork is, is flawed in some places and you see where the computer kind of guesses some things wrong. So we're not quite there yet, but guys, this is version one. This is how close we are because with the iPhone, right? It took over a decade before people start. The iPhone came out in 2007. It wasn't until 2017, 2018 or later that we even started entertaining the conversation of can your iPhone replace your cinema camera, your actual camera? Can it be the only camera you have in your house, right? The iPad was also around many, many, many years before we started having the conversation about this device can legitimately replace your laptop. AI art, this is like version one given to the masses in terms of widespread availability and they're popping up in apps left and right. This is version one and we're already having this discussion about is human created art dead? When you have a computer that can look at different styles and different eras in the split second and then take someone's face, translate those features, the features of their face into a certain style, whether ultra realistic or wild and crazy, and spit that back out in something that's actually pleasing to the eye, Think about what's happening here. Humans were supposed to be the only beings on earth that could like appreciate art. Like not to say that animals don't like enjoy music or things like that. I don't know. I, I, have never, I haven't done research on that kind of thing. I would imagine they do enjoy that kind of stuff. But in terms of true depth of appreciation, it seems like it's only humans. And so thus, we were the only ones who could create something that other humans would potentially enjoy and be able to recognize as thoughtful art but now you have these computer systems that can do that and that's just oh man this is only the beginning whether you think it's happening now or not i i don't think there's anybody who would say in the comments that it's not that this is not a legitimate concern at all and for me i think it's this is just the tip of the iceberg this is a slippery slope and we're going full speed ahead down it because the next thing is music. Don't, don't, don't even like think that it's not coming for the music industry. Especially, I mean, people say all the time that pop music is pretty cook, uh, cookie cutter, right? The same, right? Or the same beats, the same, you know, types of melodies. How, wh why could you not have an artificial intelligence that could study, right, through machine learning all the works of, say, a Max Martin, right? And then be, uh, you know, download into itself a selection of instruments, right? Drum machines, synths, etc. 
and then create music. Music is math, right? And computers are amazing at math. Artwork's a little bit harder. Music is just math. It's rhythm. Rhythm is math. Da, 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 right? A computer can do that. We already use machines. I'm a music producer. Like, I make music, and we already use computers so much in the music industry. AI will be able to replace the engineer and just create music. Now, this is nuts because it would end the music industry as we know it because, man, an executive who knows nothing about music can hire a programmer, right, or somebody to run the AI, to create the AI. The AI can then fake inspiration. It can fake artwork to an acceptable level because, let's be honest, our standards for quality art are not as high as uh, they've been in the past. Let's just say that. I think that's putting it lightly. So imagine that. A whole bunch of... Like, just whatever pop melody you can imagine, fill in the blank there. And it goes... And it just sells and sells and sells. All of a sudden, it's an automated system. And instead of just putting out hit after hit after hit, they time it, right? You could have an AI that, that just studies the hits, right? Every single Billboard Hot 100 song in the last 20 years, 10 years, and then create a song based on that. This kind of stuff is already being done. It's already happening. This is not really new. What I'm saying is, um, what are we going to do about that? If anything, what does it mean for a society in which art is taken away from humans, and I don't mean that humans will stop creating art, but I mean other humans will stop buying it. Now, it doesn't mean that a human can't put out a hit song and that's still going to go viral. But in terms of like, you see all these profile pictures, right? Usually you would need to kind of fake it on an app or you'd have to pay somebody to generate some great art with your face on it. You see, even you even walking down the boardwalk or in a vacation town where you have this, you know, somebody paint kind of those crazy boardwalk uh, exaggerated uh, paintings of you and whoever you're with. No one would need that anymore. I know mean, you could say it's part of the experience, but the necessity of it would be gone, right? Not, not that anybody really needs photos like that or paintings like that, but you know, it's a thing, obviously. So album artwork for music, um, all kinds of things. You think about it like a, a visual album, I could auto-generate an entire visual album. So like create the music myself and then AI generate photos to represent the, the vibe and the atmosphere of each song. Whoo, man, that's crazy. And then obviously, so this goes on and on and on and on. Pick your industry. There's a place where AI eventually can take over. And it's because it is a... Well, when you just think about what AI is, it's a fake mind. So in theory, anything that a human could do, an AI could fake. I know that's way out there or way down the line, but could you say it's not even possible? No, I, I think we're far beyond that point. I think it's all possible at this point. So very interesting times that we're in. Let me know, of course, all of your thoughts down in the comments below. I always try to keep this this show uh, under about a half an hour, roughly 20 minutes to a half an hour to fit with a commute or something like that. Um, if you didn't hear last week's episode, there will be links to that as well and the previous episode. So I've done three of these super long form video podcast type videos. I hope you guys are enjoying them. The last one did pretty well. I'm kind of still testing it out with the audience. But the only way to uh, let me know that you guys are enjoying the content in this style and in this way where I'm just having a conversation with you guys, uh, you know, unscripted and stuff with all the mistakes and all the likes and the ums and the imperfections, um, you got to let me know with a like. And share the video with your friends. If you think any of the opinions that I expressed were interesting, share them with your friends. Because I think this is a conversation that people have to have. Because a lot of people don't even realize it. Especially young people, which a lot of this technology is targeted towards. And I'm about to digress and get on a little bit of a soapbox. 
I feel like younger younger people they they love the new technology. I know this because I'm a geek myself. And when I was younger, I never even thought about the consequences in society of any of the new tech. Like I was like, oh my goodness! In 2007, I was like, this isn't a flip phone. This is a touchscreen phone. When I put my finger on the screen, it reads it all smooth and stuff like that. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. I was 10 when the iPhone came out. So cool. I never even thought about this is going to kill so many jobs and so many industries. The death of the Walkman and MP3 player. Uh, the iPod already did that. Uh, you know, the death of kind of the point and shoot camera or, you know, it marked the beginning of the end for that industry. And so many other so many other industries, your pager, all that kind of stuff. It was it was gone. So I didn't think about that. And I think the same thing is happening now uh, with so many different things. Right. People have conversations about TikTok and the effect that it's having on young people's attention span. Kids don't care about that. They won't even have the attention span to even listen to somebody tell them that their attention span is getting shorter. Right. And so with AI, I think it's great. And everybody's jumping in. Everybody's diving in and creating their own artwork. And it's cool. But I think it's kind of the responsibility of people who are older or who understand the technology to at least make the consequences or what we perceive to be the consequences of these new technologies to make them known and at least make people aware so that um, people can either support or not support these kind of things. Uh, I don't know. The jury's still out for me on whether or not I'm going to really support. <laughs> support. Everything's not a social movement, honestly. Like We're in that kind of world right now. But, you know, I, I think that there is something to be said for whether we are widely going to use AI to generate our art and to do these things or whether we'll support um, artists who still want to do that. But then it's an entire industry that's supported by people feeling bad for them and wanting to support them, not because they need to have it. And that's a scary place to be because it's basically charity. You know, you're you're giving to help support instead of creating something that people love and they want to have. You know what I mean? Hmm. Interesting things to think about. And of course, let me know all of your comments down in the description below like the video if you enjoyed this conversation and share it with your friends to keep the conversation going follow this channel for more episodes just like this and i will see you in the next one i'm chris grant jr it's the granite geek show